This is our second video looking at extinctions in Earth's history as well as today. Big concepts. There's a background extinction rate, and I think we'll cover more about that in this video. And there have been five mass extinctions in the past. So we covered those in video one. You should definitely watch it uh, because the causes of those mass extinctions are highly relevant to what's happening in today's world. That brings us to our last big concept is that it appears we're in the midst of a sixth mass extinction event. So right now, we're at the beginning of what some people are calling the Anthropocene. And at the beginning of our class, you listened to a podcast and read a little bit, bit about this sort of controversial term. Um, the current era that we're in, I think it's an era, uh, is the Holocene. And there's a debate about whether we should call it the Anthropocene because of our enormous impacts on the entire planet and the species that live here. So one of those big impacts we've made are global atmospheric changes. And that has been a cause of mass extinctions throughout history. We see either a distinct rise in CO2 or a decrease in CO2 associated with almost all of our mass extinction events. You can check this public data from Google. I'll link it in the comments. Here's what our planet looks like roughly right now. Um, we still have a little bit of differences here, um, but it's much more familiar looking to us. So we have changes in our ocean chemistry and sea level. We are seeing sea level rise and we're seeing our pH drop. These are two things that were associated with our largest mass extinction in history, as well as at least one of the other mass extinctions. So this rising temperature is always going to be associated with sea level rise because you get the melting of the ice sheets. If you ever have sea level drop, that is associated with cooler temperatures. So here's a graph showing us our cumulative sea level change. This orange trend line shows us um, information from tide gauges and how we estimate our sea level change from that. This blue line here at the end that starts in about 1990 um, is showing us satellite measurements. There have been recent studies showing that satellite measurements have actually corresponded pretty well um, to our estimates for sea level change. So you can see if we start at zero here, our cumulative sea level change, we're up to about nine inches. And that is, you know, in a century and a half. So we are seeing sea level rise globally. We can also look at ocean heat content. So these are measurements from different databases. Um, and we see, you know, a variation within those, but overall we see an increasing trend, right? So our ocean heat content is also increasing. And this here just represents our 1971 to 2000 average. Note that that is a 30 year time frame, so we're looking at climate related data. And we see overall an increase in our ocean heat content. So it is storing some of that excess heat from our planet. That means that the ocean is warming, and there's going to be some point where it's not going to be able to absorb as much of that heat. Additionally, the ocean changes temperature very slowly. So even if we reverse warming by removing CO2 from the atmosphere, that slow release by the ocean is going to take a long time to get back to normal. What else is happening right now? We have many thousands of species listed as threatened, um, and we see many species going extinct. So if we are thinking about whether or not we are in the midst of a sixth mass extinction, looking at how many species are going extinct is an important component. Currently, there are almost 2 million described species on Earth. That is a low estimate for actual species. Um, so 2 million species described, that means how many have been um, written about in scientific papers um, and published and named, right? So many species have been discovered um, but haven't been described yet. So there are many unnamed species kind of floating around out there. And more than that still are species who haven't been discovered yet. Every time we go to a tropical area or to the bottom of the ocean, you sample and find more species that are completely unfamiliar to us. So 2 million um, vastly up under represents the number of species that are on Earth. There was a pre-human natural background extinction rate of about between one to five species per year. That number 
is super variable depending on who you ask. It could be up in the 20s um, as the sort of high end estimate. I think I took a more low end estimate, but it was repeated in a few different sources. So one to five species per year is kind of a lot. Um, if you think about how many years the Earth has been around um, and how many years life has been around, potentially two billion years that life has been on our planet. So thinking about how many species go extinct every year versus how many um, years there are geologically, things always blow my mind. Um, I think very much on human time scales. I was never a geologist, so thinking about that conceptually always kind of uh, explodes my brain a little. It's likely that the current rate of extinction is a thousand times higher than the background rate and rising. Again, this is going to be an estimate that varies. Um, I've seen the thousand times number repeated multiple times. However, I've seen numbers as low as a hundred times. Regardless, we are orders of magnitude higher in our extinction rate than the uh, kind of estimated background rate. So what does that mean? Um, we are seeing an increased rate of extinction. Generally, that is associated with um, our mass extinctions, right? Because you have to have that increased rate of extinction to have a mass extinction. Um, so because we're seeing that doesn't mean that it will continue to increase, but it is more evidence that these changes that we're seeing are all associated with each other and are reflective of changes and events that we've seen in the past. So this is an infographic about the sixth mass extinction and whether we're in it right now. And I think it's interesting based on the way that it represents these individual groups um, and kind of the how information is conveyed. So we're looking at an infographic because you need to practice doing that. Here's the top part of the infographic. Uh, you can see that species that are threatened, listed as threatened officially, are in red and not threatened are in black. We have different groups represented here. Here we have birds. Notice that 99% of known species were assessed. So thinking about how much do we know about what we know, right? So all of the species that we know, 99% of those we assessed um, for whether they were threatened or not. And 8,601 were not threatened. 1,253 were threatened. So that gives us a 13% of those species that were assessed of the birds are threatened. Now those numbers, keep those in mind. People love birds. So birds are overrepresented potentially in this study. Um, and so think about also the physical space that this takes up, the size of each of these birds and where it's located. It's on the top. And if we're reading things from left to right, like we often do, that's gonna be the first thing you look at. So on the top um, and even in the center, right? So high importance has been given to birds and mammals of which 85% of known species were assessed and 25% were threatened. And of the mammals, we chose a charismatic megafauna. Um, one that we think about a lot um, are mountain lions or cougars. Um, so keep these numbers in mind. We have, um, maybe there's 6,000 mammals on the planet and there's somewhere around 10,000 birds. Here's a little sliver of amphibians, only 70% of which were assessed, which is still a pretty good estimate when you think about how many species there are out there. But 41% were threatened. So for the mammals, it was a quarter. For the birds, it's, you know, 13%, what's that, an eighth? 41%, almost half of amphibian species were threatened. And you know, there's 4,000 species of amphibians listed on here. It's possible that there's many that are not yet discovered um, and only 70% of those were assessed. But is this not a super important number? I mean, it's up here on the top, but it's kind of on the top in the corner and it's on the right hand side. So you're gonna see it last, right? So think about placement and um, consideration given to each of these groups. Now we'll go to the bottom of the infographic. So here we are looking at other threatened life, not mammals, birds, or amphibians. What's all that other crap out there? So here's reptiles. They would be just below the amphibians. 30% um, of known species were assessed, not very many. <laughs> and we don't even have a percentage on how many of those are threatened. You have the visual percentage, which looks like about a third, right? So high number of threatened species. Mollusks, 5% of known species assessed. 
flowering plants, 5% of known species assessed. And yet they found that most of them, those species that were assessed, were threatened. How crazy is that? Non-flowering plants, 3%, crustaceans, 3%. Other, which is shown as a fungus, 0.6%. Insects, 0.3%. Arachnids, how many species are even listed on here? 0.2% <laughs> of known species were assessed. We only have 24 species that are even listed, and almost all of them are threatened. How crazy is this infographic that all of the stuff that is the most threatened that is the least understood is just down here relegated to the bottom. Here's the stuff that's already gone. Um, we have extinct species in all these groups, mollusks huge, birds pretty big, flowering plants pretty big. Um, thinking about how people convey this information and why. Why is it that birds and mammals are up there on the top even though birds potentially are some of the least threatened? I mean we definitely know that birds are going to feel the impacts of their food sources going away, right? Insects and flowering plants. So habitat is going to go away. Fishes are going extinct, right? So birds will be impacted, but are those the, the groups that we need to focus on or do we need to focus on these basal groups that are disappearing and not understood and we have no idea of the actual diversity of? So we probably have higher extinction rates than we even know because we don't even know they exist and they're gone. So be thinking about that. Infographics. How do we communicate and why? And what do we need to communicate?